So, after last, week, after last week, like, I don't know how I was going to follow Jeff Capicella's uh, awesome hot topic. Like, that's like following the doors at a big concert or something in the Buddha head. So, <laughs> we can't look through the doors. So, I wanted to do a hot topic on cloud computing because I think it's really interesting. But, like, I want to take a spin on this so it's not, like, so geek centric. And then the fact that I want to basically connect the dots here for you guys and how I think cloud computing is going to be directly tied to the rise of the machines, uh, as in uh, Terminator 2 style. And I think this is the direction that the world is heading into, and uh, Nostradamus' prophecies are all tied to cloud computing. So I'm going to explain what cloud computing is, and then I'm going to, I'm going to tell you guys how I can connect to this, and like hopefully I can outdo this guy over here. So, in a nutshell, what cloud computing basically is, is taking the power of many computers and turning it into like basically a supercomputer. Um, really it's just like a network of servers that can all perform a task all at once to create one large task. So if you had one bee working on a honeycomb, it's only going to be able to work on one comb at a time and then work to the other ones. And even if he's a really fast worker bee, he can't equate to a thousand really slow worker bees all working on separate honeycombs at the same time to make the very large honeycomb. That's basically what cloud computing is doing. It's taking a lot of different computers, each performing one small task, not the same task, that all comes into like an application-based basing of tasks. So it can increase bandwidth. And right now, like processors, ever since the Intel processor came on, we saw this huge jump in how fast computers are. Like PCs, they went all of a sudden to gigahertz processors, to two gigahertz processors. Now all of a sudden we see this rigid slowdown. Everything's slowing down. We haven't really gone beyond that like 3.4 gigahertz processor line and it's really starting to slow down. The reason for this is because, you know, just the, that one processor, no matter how you go, the dual core and everything, it just can't really increase in speed by that much. But if you take a lot of single core processors that are at one gigahertz all working at the same time together to create a process that all e equates to one in a grid, then you can create a much faster system. Now this was all brought about by Google. so. What Google was, was like when they first came about, it was a bunch of dudes in their garage and they grabbed a bunch of really old PCs that were just a bunch of, like a piece of crap that they didn't use anymore, 286s. And I don't know if any of you guys remember what a 286 is, <laughs> but that was my first computer in college. Uh, so they, they set them all up to basically work together as crawlers to crawl the web. And the more of these old computers they got, the faster Google got, the more powerful it got, the, the bigger their whole server technology is. And right now that's what they still do. They still are taking your old computers and turning it into this big network grid and everything. <laughs> So this can also happen with internet too. So if you think of internet bandwidth, where we're at right now with cable modem and with uh, uh, like our T1 or, or even, even faster, the uh, commercial business uh, uh, internet. Um, if you think about it, if you were to combine the internet power of a lot of computers working together, that just increases your bandwidth. If you're trying to access a website, if you're trying to access the website, off of one server, it's going to take a while to load because that server starts processing. But what if you're trying to access a, a website and pe bits and pieces of this website that's building that one page are on multiple servers, it's going to bring that website into fruition a lot faster. And it's basically like adding horsepower to a car. <laughs> okay, so how does this help? <laughs> movies. <laughs> if you think about an HD movie, if you want to watch, say, a, uh, uh, a movie in HD on, say, like the new Netflix uh, server, you know how you can kind of stream movies now? Remember how long it used to take to load and like YouTube would catch up to that red bar? It still does sometimes. You can't get beyond it. Well, that's just working off one server. It's, it's the technology of that server that you have to compete with that other people utilize in that bandwidth. Well, if, if that's broken up into a cloud of servers. So that video, one second of that video is on one computer, another second of that video is on another computer, another second is on another computer. Those computers can all send information all at once, and then you basically the video is there, the video is streaming, and it's all happening all. Yes, question by uh, like the young man in the back with the hair. <laughs> <laughs> is it kind of like 
kind of like, well, BitTorrent, exactly. So BitTorrent is probably the closest to a real app world application you have. So again, if a lot of people have the exact same file on their computer, it'll basically access little bits of information from all these different computers. And the more people that have that file, the faster that, that file would, would come in illegally into your computer. So BitTorrent, <laughs> yeah, it, that's how you get music, some music faster than others. If it was a really popular song, a lot of people have that same file. It's looking for ones and zeros and different ones and zeros basically from each of the different files to bring them all into one. And that's basically a cloud network all working together. Now the key here is connection. So the only way this can happen is if all these computers are somehow connected. And that's what we call like a grid technology. So the grid is actually taking all these computers, making them work together on the same file. And with BitTorrent, that's basically the torrent machine being on on everybody's computer that creates this grid. And the more people that are in the grid, the faster the technology, the higher the bandwidth, and so on and so forth. So I think what we're going to be moving into in the near future is this grid technology. And instead of being part of the World Wide Web, you're going to start to see what's, what they're going to start calling the, the World Wide Grid. And this World Wide Grid is going to be this network of computer really working together creates an elastic system. Now the elastic system was created by Amazon's own version of cloud computing, which it's using to host websites on it, like major, major, huge websites. And Amazon.com, as you know how big that is, is working on this grid, which is an elastic system. Elastic meaning they have all these computers in the grid, and they only use as many computers as they need at any given time. So if it's a really low bandwidth time, such as two in the morning, they're only using the power of three or four computers. But if it's peak time, 5 p.m., 3 p.m. or something, and they need all the bandwidth they can get, they can basically open up all these other computers to do small processes, which are also probably conducting small processes on somebody else's website at the same time. And it's kind of the power of that all working together. The EC2 structure from Amazon was actually just, they just signed a merger with IBM, which had their own cloud computing technology, which was very highly regarded. And that system is actually uh, going to become very powerful. So you're going to be hearing a lot more about this in the near future with websites doing large development builds like high-scale uh, commerce systems. So what does this mean about the rise of the machines? <laughs> As the worldwide grid comes in, just think of the power of every single human being's computer all of a sudden being established on this grid. Now all of these computers begin working together in some kind of network, all performing different tasks. And actually, a really early form of this computing was, uh, what was it, uh, not NASA, but the SETI, uh, SETI. Yeah, the SETI system, which was basically all these computers performing small tasks to calculate what the number of the stars and then uh, galaxies. They were looking SETI for search for extraterrestrial Search for extraterrestrial that's, that's, like, that's like the earliest form of this cloud computing. Now these computers are basically working at one thing. Imagine all of these computers in the world starting to work uh, together to perform all these tasks and starting creating their own tasks. And next thing you know, your 286 is contributing towards this, the uh, Terminator 2 being formed. So the power, the, the, the power of this technology, all it's going to take is one computer controlling this grid that has sort of the artificial intelligence to create something. The artificial intelligence to find a way to hack into our nuclear systems or something. Now that computer, if it has a small bit of this artificial intelligence for de decoding and, and hacking into a system, all of a sudden it has everything on the grid working to hack into the system. Your computer could be responsible for launching a nuclear attack. I'll, uh, Unless you buy a Mac. <laughs> yes. So that is cloud computing. In a nutshell. Yes. Um, yeah, the man that's sitting down at uh, <laughs> the sideburns. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. Um, for the for the um, you know having a having a, a grid cloud computing system, in addition to it being you know able to become super smart and you know launch a, a 